Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, where every day we explore how technology is transforming the world of business, entire industries, and of course, our lifestyle. No hype on here or stories about the latest iPhone, just real stories, real use cases of how how different technology is making a real difference right now. But at the heart of all that is people and how technology works best when it brings people together. Now, today I'm going to be talking to my friends at Data IQ, who I've not spoken to in over 18 months. So a catch up is long overdue. So Florian is the co-founder and CEO of Data IQ, and he has a bold perspective that humans are the not-so-secret essential ingredient to designing, implementing, and transforming AI. And he's also an evangelist for data transparency. So I'm hoping that he can provide some expert analysis on the myths and realities of this AI era that we're entering. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to New York so we can speak with Florian all about Data Eye, who is now officially friend of the show after his third appearance. So a massive warm welcome back to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little more about who you are and what you do for anyone that's missed our previous conversations? I am Florian Dueto and I'm CEO and co-founder of Dataiku. Dataiku is a software company. Um, and uh, which is an enterprise platform enabling organization to build their AI in a human-centric way. Yeah, I created this company six years ago, and uh, we are about uh, 300 employees now operating uh, in Europe and in the U.S. And it's great to hear how successful you guys are on uh, because I think we last spoke in 2017 on episodes 205 and 265, and we're now racing towards episode 1000. And I do suspect we have a few more listeners since our original conversation. So can you just offer a quick refresher on the kind of problems that you solve for your customers? Mm, yeah, sure. So, so first, like episode 1000, that's fantastic. Uh, and I really, uh, really enjoy enjoy this podcast. And uh, Every episode is like better than the next. And so the, the problem we're solving at Dataiku is the fact that most organizations actually need to get into artificial intelligence. They need to build it. They need to get into it. But the problem they're facing is actually not technology per se, because technology is something, well, you can buy or acquire in a way. It's not technology. It's skills, meaning skills of the people. And the thing they want to solve for is not possibly the solution to AI. Well, at the end of the day, that's always something they could also buy. It's the cultural problem they've got related to AI, meaning, oh, can you build the right AI? Have people within your organization accept it? Have people adopt it? Change your business associated to it? And so we are actually enabling those organizations to have more people within the organization to participate to the development of AI and creating the culture around AI for those organizations. And so we serve uh, mostly global customers, Fortune 1000 companies that are uh, scaling their uh, AI practice. And one of the things I loved about chatting with you is how you have, you have a bold perspective that it's actually humans that are the not so secret essential ingredient to designing, implementing and transforming AI. Because I think we all hear about artificial intelligence, but a lot of people forget about the people element. But so can you tell me a little bit more about that belief? Well, it, it, it's kind of obvious that uh, humans are needed in order to build AI because, yeah, it's not AI won't be building AI. Humans are needed to to get those things done. But the, the particular question is about like situation, especially in a business context, where you've got a replacement in the sense you replace part of a human task, a human job by a machine. So partially, not completely, usually. And so when you need to do that, you are actually creating a new business process where human and machine need to collaborate. And the challenge is that in order to, 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 to make it a success, you need to have human in the loop as soon as possible in the sense of like they need to participate to the design of this new process, to the design of this new AI, to uh, 
put their own little grain of salt in terms of, oh, the AI should take uh, its decision. Because if you don't do that, essentially the new process is likely not to work that well because human won't be accepting it or won't be interacting with the machine the way they should. And that's why you need to think about human and putting human in the loop when you are uh, working on AI. And earlier this month, you also hosted Egg 2019, which was the first, well, what it, to that again, which was the Human Centered AI Conference. So, for anybody that missed that and not read about it online, can you tell me more about the conference and what your vision for the event was? Our vision was to bring together in New York uh, various practitioners of AI and have together um, a, a common reflection about like the position of the human within AI. How can you build AI in a human centered way? And so we had different practitioners coming from the business side, coming from the technology side, coming from lots and lots of different industries, including financial services, aerospace, manufacturing, automobile services, and so on. But we are all giving, sharing their thoughts or sharing their experience in terms of, oh, can you actually enable AI within an organization in a human sort of way? And so in that regard, the, 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 the fact that we are able to bring people that different, coming I mean, from that many different countries, that many different industries in a single location, I think made the, the event uh, quite a success. And how did it go? And how was it received by attendees? And is there anything that you feel went particularly well? Uh, I think it was well received by attendees, meaning we had the people uh, kind of like smiling all day and actually staying over the full day of the conference. And let's admit it, when you go to tech conference these days, you just usually like go for one hour, pick your uh, the session you like, and just uh, get over the other things you need to do over the day. But like here, we had like great attendance a full day, uh, which is amazing. And I think that the fact, um, well, to some extent, the attendees were probably a little surprised by the conference at the very beginning, because most of the time you expect a tech conference to be really about tech in the sense of like features or new technologies. And especially in AI, there are like so many things going on that you expect like a great, great uh, presentation about the newest uh, deep learning network, whatever thingy. But the, the fact that we were able to talk about something else, about the more long-term impact of AI, uh, I think was great because it, it captivated the audience more uh, long-term. And, and I think it actually sparked lots of conversation during the event and afterwards. And so actually, um, the, the after event, when people were just chatting with one another, was possibly one of the best parts of the event because we were able to actually chat about lots of different subjects. And it does seem that many organizations overlook the importance of having that human touch, like I mentioned a few moments ago, especially when they're looking to propel these technologies forward and responsibly and sustainably. But is that something that you're seeing changing or do we still have a long way to go, do you think? I think that's, that is something that is slowly changing because as they are pushing those things into production, as they are operationalizing this, organizations realize that they need to think about impact and practical adoption. And so they more and more consider the human side of thing. Uh, oh, what kind of user interaction, what kind of uh, uh, long-term impact you need to consider when um, building um, AI technologies. And so it's still a long way to go, but like the most advanced of our customers are already building some kind of interdisciplinary groups uh, related to AI that are actually acting as some kind of like internal product groups like, who do we apply AI and what should an AI do in order to be accepted and successful within our organization? So I think it's the way to move forward. And it does seem that everyone's talking about AI at the moment. There's a real excitement in the air. But whenever I've attempted to delve a little bit deeper, I've always struggled to find any real world examples. I thought I was looking in the wrong places. But then I recently read a quote where I think it was yourself that said, AI is the end goal or the target for many companies today. But the reality is that are very few actually executing AI systems yet, and much less are they ensuring that they're ethical, responsible, and sustainable. So what progress are you seeing in the industry right now? And is there anything that excites you or, or equally concerns you? Yeah, it's, it's hard to, to, to have a complete perspective on, on the progress of AI um, in the industry. 
Um, especially even us at the Taiku, we probably have a bias uh, in terms of uh, this because we probably as, as today as customers more early adopters of AI than, uh, than anything else. But I would say that globally in the market today, maybe 15, 20% of the large organization do actually have uh, significant AI systems actually running in production. And so this 20% are bound to go to 85, 90%, I think, in the next uh, five to 10 years. And so if you take from a, from a responsibility and the ethical perspective, I guess one concern in terms of this progress is um, we will get there first. And especially from a more um, uh, public and like from mindset perspective, um, if the ones that are progressing faster in terms of AI, the ones that are actually impactful on society are um, the kind of use case that scare people off. I don't know, like the 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 face app of the world, meaning those any uh, image recognition or face recognition use cases that are uh, uh, fun or useful, but scary in a sense. So if those use cases are the one moving forward very, very fast, where like the one in, I don't know, healthcare are actually failing or, uh, get into um, big misrepresentation like or any other kind of failure like the the bad blood Thanos kind of situation so if the if the bad use cases or the scary use cases are moving too fast compared to the useful ethical responsible transform uh, society transforming use cases i guess that ai ultimately will fail in the sense of being accepted as something important and uh, positively, positively, positively changing society. And so that's actually what concerned me. How can you help uh, the more impactful long-term use cases to move forward as fast as um, others? And privacy is another hot topic that we must mention and something that was covered brilliantly. I think it was on the Data IQ blog, which I, I saw recently. And it explored how working with data has the potential to springboard your company to success indeed or infamy if you're not careful with your privacy. So is there anything, any advice or anything that you'd like to add to that narrative? Yeah, I think that any organization must understand where what data Consuming the uses of this data, but like also be realistic. Right now, the big failure of privacy are not related to anything subtle related to AI. Like we use this model and it had some like very subtle impact in terms of privacy. The big failure of privacy are related to a major data leak and actually cyber security issues. And so I guess that as they uh, uh, invest into AI and data. Organization must also uh, invest in terms of uh, security, overall governance of their data, and so building these governance uh, layers at the same time as they are building their AI layers is something that any organization should do. And you also need to be realistic. It's governance today is not the same thing as governance ten years ago. It's not just about applying. Uh, the existing playbook. It's about actually understanding what data and governance for data in the age of AI and cloud is. So what's next for Data IQ and indeed yourself? Is there anything else that you can share with me today? Yeah, we, we start thinking about uh, the next. And so w w what happened to the world, uh, for instance, when we start having carbon of AI systems in place? And so you can imagine that at some point some of them will be old enough that you don't remember who built them, or that they are the combination of dozens of interlinked services. And so when you need to update the part, you don't know where it's located. You can imagine that the world is getting there. And so at some point, AI systems, I think, will become so bad that they will be critical, critical like, I don't know, uh, an engine on an airplane. And so today, when you maintain an, uh, an airplane engine, you do that by having uh, strong industrial practices and long hours of work and thousands of pages of documentation so people can actually maintain for over 20 years this kind of critical system. And I think that the same thing will need to be done on AI with AI system, but the equivalent of thousands of pages of documentation that you've got from an airplane engine, the equivalent of that from an AI would be just too big to be, in a sense, printed out as documentation. So you need to find a way 
to actually maintain government documents automatically, AI system on the long run. And so that's one of the things we are working on. Now, before I let you go, can I just remind you to ask the listeners where they can find you online and also contact your team if they are left with any questions after listening to our conversation today? Yeah, sure. The easiest way to contact me online is to get on Twitter and uh, message me there. I uh, answer to everyone. And uh, on the Tycoon website, you can easily get uh, access to our software. It's actually free. And also contact my team and uh, get someone local, either in a you in America, Europe, and Asia, uh, reach back, reach out back to you. Excellent. Well, it's a huge honor to get you back on the show. And hopefully, I'd, well, I'd love to stay in touch with you and learn more about how things are progressing. So I suspect that things are going to really ramp up uh, uh, throughout the next 12 months and beyond. So all I ask is that we don't leave it another 18 months till we get to speak again. But a big thank you yeah. for coming on today. Thanks a lot. I really enjoyed uh, speaking with you today. As we become more reliant on technology, Data IQ believes humans are responsible for working through issues of, of governance, trust, ethics and sustainability of systems to ensure that the progression to AI is one that is controlled and calculated. It's just like Spider-Man movies, isn't it? With great power comes great responsibility. And in addition, it's imperative that AI innovations are based on models that people can explain and understand that won't go on to cause a catastrophe. I also love how the Egg Conference this year embraced the idea that there has been a profound shift in enterprise data practices with the growth of data science, machine learning and AI. However, most organisations do overlook the importance of having a human touch to propel these technologies forward responsibly and sustainably. So for those reasons alone, I salute today's guest and the teams at Data IQ for everything that they're doing. And I love how that this year's conference explored the concept that machine learning and AI go beyond algorithms and data sets. But where do you see them going? As always, email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, or you can tweet me at Neil C. Hughes, or go over to my website, techblogwriter.co.uk, if you'd like to find out a little bit more and listen to other episodes from this podcast. And if you're wondering where I see machine learning and AI going beyond algorithms and data sets, my answer is simply roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Sorry, that was more than enough for me. I feel a silly hour coming on. I was on my best behaviour for a good 20, 25 minutes there. So I'll save you for my mad half hour and say a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.